So I've been a Linode customer for 10 years and now they're sponsoring this channel. Linode is a great product when it comes to web hosting. I've used them in my $20 a month account to literally serve traffic to hundreds of thousands of people in a month and it only costs me $20 a month. When you compare that to Azure or AWS, like it doesn't even, it's not even in the same ballpark. Linode has all kinds of options to choose from, including their new dedicated CPU plans. And if you're trying to do stuff like machine learning, like video encoding, databases, game servers, data mining, stuff like that, Linode already has nine data centers around the world and they're opening two more this year. If you guys sign up, you get a $20 a month credit just to sign up with the link in the description tab below. So make sure you use that because you can save 20 bucks. So this is the uh, Virginia State Bird. I just thought I'd share this with you. This is the Cardinal. Hey guys, what's up? So in this video, I'm talking about um, the state of programming where we are right now. And I just wanted um, to basically discuss a few things, kind of get your feedback on it. I'm curious what you guys have to think, what you guys have to say or what you think about it. Uh, but I read an article the other day that millennials are now like pretty much miserable. Like, like on average, when it comes to career, um, they're finding that millennials are much, much more dissatisfied with their careers than they were several decades ago. And I, and I think that there's several reasons for that. But number, number one being, you know, the fact that it's no easier to survive in this day and age than it was 20, 30 years ago. In fact, it's probably a lot harder. Um, number two, you have middle, middle class wages that have been declining since the 1970s in the United States. So we're getting less stuff for the money that we're making. If you look at the cost of living, it's not getting any cheaper. Wages aren't really keeping up when you when you keep uh, when you look at the statistics for what they are. Um, and now with social media, we used to keep up with the Joneses like, oh, my neighbor got a BMW. And it, whether it was your neighbor or not, like, there's, there's this phrase in the United States called keeping up with the Joneses. I'm not even sure if it is a United States phrase or not, uh, but it's all about the fact that you see your neighbor Bob bought a brand new Benz, right? You're living in the same neighborhood as Bob. You got a, you got a job similar to what Bob does and you make similar money, but why aren't you driving the Benz? You're driving the Camry and this dude's driving the Benz. Like you then start to think, hold on a second, maybe I should be driving the Benz. Like why is this dude driving the Benz and not me? Um, and like with that, like that's always been a thing, right? It's a real thing. Jealousy is a real thing. You see what other people have and you, and you, you try to imitate it. And so often we try to imitate success instead of coming up with our own. Um, I can tell you every single time I've tried to imitate success that I've found, I failed miserably. Like I didn't have any success on it. My success from my career to anything else, like has all come from like actual passion and not because I was following somebody else's dream. I kind of had my own uh, and even my own, you know, even if that dream did unfold and change over time, I've always had my own dream. Like I wasn't really following somebody else's um, at least when it comes to programming. Now th there are certain things that I've definitely done like business ideas, even like certain programming business ideas that I've done, um, you know, that I wasn't passionate about, but I was just trying to kind of replicate success that I saw around me. Um, I don't know, I guess that's human nature or something. But nowadays though, instead of keeping up with the Joneses via, you know, like your, your neighbor just pulled into the drive with a brand new Benz. Nowadays we're surrounded by social media. So if Chris Hawks goes out and buys a brand new convertible, shows it off on his YouTube channel, sh shares it on Facebook, every way that Chris Hawks knows from his subscribers to like, his family on Facebook and his friends and all that stuff, they now see that, you know, Chris, have, like the point is, is that like, it's so much easier to become envious of what other people have with social media. People on social media only share what they want to share. And the ones that don't are the dummies that like, you know, post stuff out there that they end up getting fired for um, or publicly ridiculed for, for saying something really stupid. So the point, the point is though, is that social media is completely fabricated. Like, what you see from Chris Hawks on social media, I can, I can guarantee you, um, like, okay, so I got friends and, and things that, that I work with, colleagues that I've worked with for a very long time. They know me. They know the Chris Hawks that is, like, probably the, the, the you know, the, the Chris Hawks that everybody knows, right, that knows me personally. Um, and then you have, like, you know, a YouTube channel where I'm posting videos and people, you know, you get a glimpse of who Chris Hawks is through the videos and stuff like that, but... You know, this stuff is very, very catered towards like your audience. It's catered to like there's editing involved. Um, even if you have somebody like me who doesn't spend a ton of time editing their content. The, the point of the, that I'm trying to make here is that social media is completely fake and that most of what you see on it is completely fake as well. 
Um, from everybody sharing their perfect lives and all that stuff, they don't have perfect lives just like you and I don't. Um, yeah, so I think honestly some of that contributes to this overall um, unhappiness that we have within our careers, especially for millennials who since the 1980s, we've seen college tuition probably quadruple since the 80s, right? So they went out, spent many years, thousands of hours learning um, to get a piece of paper after spending $150,000 on it to then move into the market and then be able to, and then still struggle just like everybody else. And, um, you know, you're paying a lot of taxes on $100,000 a year salary. You got a lot of school loans to pay back. You're trying to start a family at, at some point, probably. You want to drive a nice car and all that. Like, um, none of that stuff, I guess, is important. I, I just think that, like, we now have this whole thing where, like, we get our, net, our, our, we, we get our, our worth feeling from the careers that we do, the amount of money that we make. And that's probably always been the case, but it seems like it's even more so now. Um, but I think all overall, it's just like, like to my observations though, and like I said, I don't know if that's accurate or not, but it just seems like to me, uh, in this day and age with how hard it is to succeed, how hard it is to get your college degree, how expensive it is, how expensive to pay it back and all that, um, that people are miserable because they get into the workforce and we have to like solve problems all day long. We have, uh, we have deadlines that we have to make. We have, uh, we have shit coworkers that are creating more work for us. We have bosses that are complete assholes sometimes like there's just different things that you 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 deal with and and it's just real day everyday life and um and it just seems like maybe millennials and i'm not sure if it's like just with social networking or whatever it just seems like people expect the world to be better than it is expect things to be easier so the bottom line though is that uh, millennials themselves are not the only ones that are miserable in life in general i i do think that like social media and all that stuff is, is a big reason for their level of unhappiness. I think expectations of what life is going to be like outside of college, what life is going to be like in general, probably not just in IT, but like for both of them. Like, I mean, there are certain, like most of the time when you become disappointed or upset in life, it's because of some failed expectation, right? You expected somebody to do something and they didn't do it. You expected something to happen and it didn't happen. You expected something and it wasn't what you were looking for and you get pissed off, you know? Um, that's all normal. And I think on a large, large scale, that's kind of what's going on with, uh, with millennials. I mean, there's this whole, if, if you're surrounded with this, you know, this magical fairyland called social media all the time, and you think that life is all about like these, you know, these, uh, Snapchat filters and Instagram filters and like that stuff ain't real life though. Like, so if you can put filters on and then you step out in public and people are like, hold on a second, that's not who I thought you were. Um, I know somebody uh, who got it, you know, became an, an attorney, and their college cost roughly two hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars to become an attorney. So, community college, four-year degree, master's degree, uh, and then a doctorate. So, or JD. Um, but all that, all that said, two hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars. You're going to pay that off over the next thirty years of your life once you graduate. That is what's in store for so many different college graduates out there, depending on where you went and what you study for. And with programming, this stuff will burn you out if you let it, um, whether you're a college degree person or not. Like it's a it's a big burnout industry. And um, it's really about perspective, though, because every time I feel myself getting burned out. Sorry, I keep moving this camera around. Um, Every time I feel burned out though, I always, I, I pump my brakes and I, I take a break and I'll do something else. I'll try some other business idea. I'll take a trip or something. Um, or I'll just like, even with this channel, sometimes I just take days off of this channel just because I'm not trying to force it. Just don't feel like talking or whatever. Like, I, I don't know. I just, I don't force it because as soon as you do, like this YouTube channel has always been a fun, passion, creative project of mine. But once you involve sponsors and there's now contracts and money and there's like deadlines and things like that, it's, it's no longer like fun anymore. It's work. And, uh, and you could say you could take it or leave it, but when you're making, you know, extra money and you're paying your mortgage with your YouTube channel and sponsor deals and all this stuff, it, you know, it's, it's work, it's work. And, um, coding is the same way. Like so much of us, like, or so many of us 
we became coders before we decided we wanted to be coders. You know, we were programming because we, we got joy out of it or we had some interest and we got joy out of it. Uh, for me, I was programming for three years before I was ever paid by anybody to do it. So clearly I had, uh, you know, I had a passion there. As soon as I started getting paid by people to do it, like, yeah, it's great, like for the most part, but it's work. Like it's no longer this, let me just work on this new library because it looks cool and I'm going to do this or that with it. No, it's, you're going to come in at a specific time and you got to go to this meeting and you got to give your status report on this and that and this and that. And you got to reach out to, you know, Bob and Jim and all these other people to do this, that, and the other thing. Oh, and, and if it's not done, that's going to be your ass. Like failed expectations, man. Keep those expectations in check. <laughs> so anyway, once you become a senior though, where do you go after that? Like you become, uh, you become the senior and you don't have anywhere to go. Like there's so many seniors out there and we're all making 120 to 150 a year in most major cities. And there's not much room to either go up or down from there. It's like everybody's kind of getting paid the same amount. So it becomes, it comes down to like work and like the work that you do, the culture, perks like snacks and, and happy hours and things like that. Um, so it, that whole bottom thing though is a real big problem for somebody like myself. Um, I remember a couple of years ago, like, I think it was Yahoo. Yahoo had a CEO at one point. It was before Marissa Mayer, I believe. And if it wasn't Yahoo, it was somebody like that. I think it was Yahoo, though. And their CEO, it, it, they, they found out, didn't have a college degree. Um, or if he had a college degree, it wasn't in computer science. And for a computer science school, they had a big problem with it. And I think he was actually ousted as the president of the company because he didn't have a degree. Um, and that's something that's been going on for a long time. One of the biggest law firms out there, Gibson and Dunn, they do all kinds of copyright stuff for like Apple versus, uh, Apple versus Amazon, all that stuff. Like they're involved in all that stuff. Uh, Google versus Geico, major like landmark cases they're involved in. And um, in that case, like you can get a job there as a programmer. You could go and go to any sort of you know, run-of-the-mill uh, law school and get a job there, but you're never going to be a partner at a firm like that unless you went to like Harvard or Yale or something like that. And in the same sense, there are businesses in IT, you'll never become a manager. Um, no matter how good of a programmer or how good of a leader you are, you, you're not going to get an opportunity at certain companies to become a manager because you don't have that degree. So as much as you guys feel that the degree will hold you back from getting your first opportunity, I actually think that the, like the lack of degree is a bigger deal for people that want to move beyond the senior developer position because I'm fairly certain, and myself included, I don't see myself coding day in and day out 20 years from now. I don't. I don't even know that I see myself doing it in 10 years. Like if, if everything goes well, I'll be a millionaire in 10 years and I'll be doing something else. Uh, maybe history, some other thing, like animals. Like maybe I'll do something completely different. I don't know. Um, but I'm pretty sure I'm just not going to be a coder writing a bunch of code as I'm fat and my heart's clogging and all this stuff. Like uh, I, I, don't, I don't see that. And I think that a lot of people probably don't. And I think that that probably leads to some of this burnout too, because you're like, well, damn, I can't do this every day for, for you know, however, however long. Um, anyway, guys, so just a lot of random thoughts about, you know, IT and management. Um, I think that degree is going to be important for getting a management position in IT more than anything, more than even getting your foot in the door. And, um, you know, beyond that, like if you didn't want to do that, there is an opportunity for like architecture or maybe, you know, leadership, but leadership is typically like a pre-management type position. So that's what I'm talking about anyway. Uh, when I talk about management, cause typically you'll start as like a lead programmer and then move your way into management or director or something like that. Um, but yeah, once we hit that, that glass ceiling, man, like we, we don't really go too much further.